Hey backbenchers, so the topic of discussion today are Shalazions and Hodiolums, right? So let's jump straight into it. Shalazion is chronic inflammatory lipogranuloma of the meibomian gland. Okay, that's a lot to take in. First of all, let's let's see what a meibomian gland, of, let's see what this, this meibomian gland actually is, right? So, let's have a black screen. Remember in our last lecture when I drew, drew the ugly structure of the eye, uh, <laughs> and, and, and we saw that if there, there, this is the eye and these are the eyelids, and we zoomed in on this place, and we saw that this is the eyelid having uh, these eyelashes, and it had this little structure in it called the tarsal plate. And from this tarsal plate, or associated with this tarsal plate, were glands, right? There were glands, and they were called the meibomian glands. They're also, they could also be called tarsal glands for simplicity, but meibomian gland is more used. It's a more common word. So meibomian glands, there were these meibomian glands, right? And let's imagine, okay, this is, uh, let's imagine that we have this gland, right? And it has this duct, like every uh, gland does. Um, so if you, let's imagine you block this duct right here. Okay, and this uh, gland cannot force its materials out. What will happen is that this gland will get infected, right? It'll, it'll get infected, it'll cause inflammation. And that is exactly what happens here. So we have this hodule, uh, we have this, um, sorry, we have this uh, meibomian gland here, and somehow it's blocked, right? There is a blockage of the meibomian gland. And that, what happens after that, it, that it results in inflammation. Blocking of the meibomian gland resulting in inflammation of the meibomian gland, right? And it is usually seen in patients having diabetes and blepharitis. You know what diabetes is. Blepharitis, we will be talking about that later uh, in, in, in our future video. But you, uh, just for now, you can understand that blepharitis, blepar refers to, oops, there's something wrong with my mouse again. Uh, blepar refers to, um, it refers to the eyelids and itis refers to uh, inflammation, right? So uh, we will be talking about this later in, in, in uh, some other lecture. So clinical features of a shalazion or a blocked meibomian gland, what will, be the, uh, what will be those clinical features? Well, painless swelling, the first one. This word painless is very important, right? Because there will be very similar uh, diseases to shalazions in appearance and they will be painful, right? So painless, this, this, this word will differentiate it very much. It'll, it'll come in handy a lot. So chalazions are painful, right? And it's a swelling because it's inflamed, of course. Those signs of inflammation, redness, swelling. And it's usually, you'll see it in the upper eyelid. This is also important. You will not usually see chalazions in, in lower eyelid. You will usually see them in the upper eyelid. And, it, and, and this, this one is interesting. You'll have blurred vision due to mechanical pressure. So a chalazion, an infected gland, will give you blurred vision, right? Let, let, let's, let's see how that happens. Let's see how that happens. So here we have the eye, right? And we know that we have this uh, iris over here. We have the pupil, right? And over here, uh, let's, let's draw for the sake of... Uh, completeness let's draw for a good measure the retina here right and and we all know that in front of this uh, iris there is this bulging right and this bulging is called the cornea right uh, what this cornea does is that when light let's let's change colors right now when light comes right light when it travels in a straight line of course and when it hits it it acts like a lens right there's another lens here as well uh, the, 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 the lens of the eye, right? But let's not talk about that for now. So when it hits the eye, it bends the light, right? Uh, the light comes, it hits the cornea, it bends. It hits the lens it, and it bends again, right? And it, it, it that, that helps us to focus materials on the retina, uh, to, to focus light on the retina, right? Now imagine, imagine, uh, if there, uh, of course this guy has eyelids, right? Let's, uh, let's assume that this guy who's having these nice little eyelids here, Let's say he has a chalazion, right? Now we know that chalazions, they are meibomian gland uh, infections, right? What will happen is that there will be this little bit of inflammation, a little bit of swelling, right? 
And this swelling with time will get bigger and bigger. And if it goes big enough, it'll put pressure. It'll, it'll bend this cornea, right? Cornea is flexible, right? It'll, it, because of its uh, mechanical pressure, what will happen? It will touch and it will bend. It will deform the, the, the shape of the cornea. As a result, light will not bend in the way it was supposed to bend. And what will happen is, you will, we will have a blurred vision, right? We will have vision which is not properly focused. So, chalazion will cause blurred vision if it gets very big, right? And a lesion may rupture through the conjunctiva as well. Well, uh, we, should, we should go to the drawing board again for a second. Um, so, so eye, um, eyelids, right? And we, we we all know that in, that there is a there is a layer of a, there is a protective layer over here uh, which is connected with the eyelids, and that layer is called the conjunctiva, right? So it, it it it's here, and it then wraps around the the, the eyeball, right? Up till here, it forms this little fornix. We will study these things later. And then it comes and attaches to the down to the uh, to the eyelid down here. So this layer is called the conjunctiva, right? And when you have an infection here, right, there is a chance that this infection will puncture through the conjunctiva, and that is exactly what we we're talking about. Lesion may rupture through the conjunctiva, right? The lesion of chalazion, the, the chalazion might rupture through the conjunctiva, and its complication, if it gets large enough, it can include ptosis and blurring. Right, we already discussed blurring. Ptosis is drooping of the eyelid when you cannot open your eyelids enough. That is called ptosis, and that's understandable. Let's say that this uh, this this chalazion somehow gets large in size. As a result, the patient will have difficulty in opening the eye, and it of course will have a little bit of a weight to it, so it'll not be so the eye won't open as properly as it used to. So complications can include ptosis and blurring of vision. Treatment, uh, not very significant, right? Uh, treatment, uh, it usually goes away on its own. Chalazions, uh, they, they develop over time. They take months to develop. And they also take months to just, you know, just to vanish away. They, they heal. They, they just go away by themselves. So they're usually benign. Uh, by benign, I don't mean the benign and malignant, which is usually, usually associated with, with a carcinoma. But when I say benign here, I mean... Uh, the English word benign, which means something which is not really harmful or which cannot cause a lot of trouble. So, chalazions are benign, they, they, are, they don't cause a lot of trouble, and they usually resolve in a few months with proper hygiene and care, right? Proper hygiene and care means you have to wash it and, and uh, you have to use antibiotic drops, for example, and you might use uh, hot presses, right, uh, uh, to to reduce inflammation, right, and all those things, little things, right, not a lot of things, right, and, and usually it goes away, but let's say, let's assume in cases where the chalazion is quite large and it, it, it is causing problems, and uh, it is persistent, it doesn't go away, well, uh, you have two ways, right, surgical removal, easy to understand, right, you just take a knife and just cut it off, right, a surgery, Easy, nothing difficult about that. Then there's steroid injections. You take an injection, you inject triamcin alone, right? This drug is important to remember. Triamcin alone is injected right into that chalazion, right? And as a result, what happens is it dissolves over time. It just it just vanishes away, right? And in, in fact, this is very, very uh, effective. This is quite effective. People usually don't do surgery unless they have no other choice. Uh, they'll always use steroid injections as a first line of treatment. Then we come to another uh, disease uh, regarding the eyelids. And these, are the, uh, these conditions uh, cause uh, something called the hodolium, right? Ho sorry, hodiolum. Oops, I, I always say that wrong. Hodiolum, right? Hordiolum. So, hodiolums, what are hodiolums? They are actually in infectious, they're actually infectious uh, nodules, right? They're acute and they're infectious. We'll talk about these later. And uh, these are acute uh, and these are infectious, which means that uh, acute means that they occur out of nowhere, they occur very suddenly, and they develop symptoms very quickly, and they also resolve very quickly. Unlike chalazions, as if you, if you see, we, we, we just said, that it'll, it'll, it usually goes away in a few months, right? And chalazions take months to even develop and then go away. This right here, hodiolums are acute. 
They go, they come quickly, they go away quickly. And they're infectious as well, right? Infectious, why are they infectious? Because we have an organism involved here. We have the Staph aureus bacteria. Staph aureus bacteria, as we all know, it is one of the most common bacteria uh, found on the skin, right? And because eyelid is skin, right? And so there is a, there is a chance that if, if, if something were to happen uh, to the defenses, of the uh, eyelids, uh, like the, uh, for example, if the guy had a, had a is immunocompromised, just 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 creating scenarios, right? Just making, just giving an example. So uh, there's a chance that Staph aureus, which is already there, it it has a chance to attack, right? And it has a chance to infect. So hodiolums are infections of the eyelid, which are caused by Staph aureus, right? And there are two types of uh, hodiolums. Uh, there's an externum, there's an internum. We'll get to that. Hodiolum externum, which is called a sty in English, right? It's very common. You might have seen it uh, on people. Uh, it is the uh, the infection of. It could be an infection of two things. It is. Uh, it could be a zeiss gland or the or the follicle, right? Let's 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 uh, get to the drawing board for a second. Um, so we here's the structure of eyelid again, right? I don't want to draw the eye again and again. It takes time. Uh, here's the eyelid, right? Here we have the uh, eyelashes, right? Over here we have the tarsal plate, and we, when, with the tarsal plate we have the meibomian glands. We're not talking about meibomian glands right here. We're talking about the other thing. We're talking about the glands of Zeiss here, right? Glands of Zeiss. These are glands located on the outer margin uh, of the of the of the eyelid, and very intimately associated with with these hair, right? Now, uh, so an infection of uh, these uh, glands, these Zeiss gland, can cause Hodiolums or the infection of hair follicle. If you zoom in on this area, okay. In fact, if you remember from your histology a little bit, when we ever, whenever we used to see a diagram of a hair, you would see that this is the skin, and there's this little dip inside the skin, and then, and then from this dip, uh, there there would there would arise uh, there would there would arise this nice little hair, right? From here, you would have a hair. From here, you would have a hair. That was a nice pun. Okay, so we have a hair, right, arising from this place. This 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 area which provides nutrition and uh, support to this hair. This this uh, place is called the the hair follicle, right? It has blood supply. It has nerve as well. Uh, uh, it has a nerve supply as well. So there is a chance that the bacteria on the skin, uh, like for example, Staph aureus bacteria, it can infect the hair follicle, right? So if, uh, if, if it specifically infects the hair follicle of the lash, follicle of the lash or the Zeiss glands, it could cause a hodiolum. And that hodiolum would, would be called an hodiolum externum. And we'll talk about why is it called an externum and why is there another one which is called an internum. So etiology cause Staph aureus infection, clinical features, painful swelling, painful, painful, very, very important to understand this. Remember the last one, it was not painful, right? Chilazions are, where is it, yeah, painless, chilazions were painless, right? Here we're talking about something which is painful, right? So hodiolums and chilazions, one of the biggest differences between them is that, that hodiolums are painful, chilazions are not. And there's, there's tenderness, right? Uh, the patient will not allow you to touch it. If you touch it, it'll feel pain. And there's pus production as well. We did not see any pus production in the previous case, in the cases of Shirazions. And the reason behind pus production is very simple. Hey, when does pus, when is pus produced? Pus is always produced when we talk about when there's, when there's, um, when there's uh, neutrophils involved. And when do you see neutrophils? You always see neutrophils in acute inflammation, right? Basic pathology. What did we read before? That hodiolums are acute, right? They're acute. So whenever there's hodiolum, there will be, uh, because it's acute, there will be neutrophils, and if there are neutrophils, there will be pus. Simple as that, right? Painful, it's tender, and it, it's pus producing. Very distinctive. There are other features you can look it up in your books, right? But these are the things which you should remember. And the treatment of hodiolum externum, uh, that is the uh, infection of zeiss or follicle of the lash, zeiss glands of the follicle of, of the lash, it's again hygiene, right? Simple, nothing so big about that, right? Topical antibiotics, warm compresses, analgesics in this case, because of course it's painful, we did not have analgesics in the other case. Yeah, another thing which you should understand is that the, 
The chalazions, if you, if you see, they're chronic inflammations, right? They're chronic inflammations. They take months to develop, as I said. So chronic inflammations do not usually produce pus. So we don't see pus in cases of chalazions. But we do see pus when, uh, when, when uh, acute inflammation is involved, like in the cases of hodiolum externum or hodiolum internum, right? Hodiolum internum and externum, they are very similar, except its site, right? So hodiolum externum, zeis glands, right? I'm, I'm just ruining everything over here with my lines. So hodiolum externum is zeis glands, Hodiolum internum is the acute pus producing infection by Staphorius of which gland? Amoebomian gland, right? Simple as that. Why is it called internum and why is the other called externum? Let's go to the drawing board again, and just for your revision and mine as well. We have this eyelashes here, right? We have uh, we have these glands associated with the uh, with, with, uh, with the follicles. These are the gland. These glands are called the zeis glands. They are on the outside. Tarsal glands, uh, sorry, the meibomian glands are associated with the tarsal plate, and they are towards the inside. So one is producing pus inside, the other is producing pus outside. So this is called the hodiolum externum. This is called the hodiolum internum. Simple as that. Hodiolum internum, meibomian glands, right? Etiology staphorius. Clinical features, pain, again, once again, pain, very important. It's painful. The other chalazion which you studied, that is also an infection of the, of the meibomian gland, but that is a chronic infection, right? And it is also uh, painless, right? Redness and swelling, of course, because uh, it, it, always, it, it always accompanies inflammation. There is pronounced tenderness, which means that it's even more painful than the audiolum externum, right? Uh, sorry, yeah, externum. And the pus appears on the inside of the eyelid as opposed to the margin. That's exactly what we just said a few minutes ago. And the treatment is again, is again similar to audiolum externum. What was that? Topical antibiotics, warm compresses, analgesics, and a general uh, uh, care of hygiene. Yeah, and that's about it. Thank you very much. Uh, please. Uh, like, subscribe, and share if you want to. And yeah, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks.